of course, with our previous show, Alien Scriptures, it's, it's, I can see where you've gone with the book, Michael, and uh, gone in this direction. Yeah, you know, it was, I wanted to, uh, I don't want to say get the religion part out of the way. I, I put some stuff in the book where people who either didn't read uh, Alien Scriptures or if they, if they didn't read it, they would kind of be caught up. And then I wanted to take it to the next phase because I believe that in order for human beings to go to the next stage of evolution, we're going to have to stop looking outside of ourselves for answers and start looking with within. And mm. religion, and this is going to sound strange coming from a, a clergy person, <laughs> you know, it, it can be not all the time. So if listeners are listening, I'm not saying all the time, but it can be used more to separate us than it can to bring us together. No, for sure. I totally agree with you, Michael. And um, I think you've done a, a great service in the book. And uh, I think you've nailed a, a few themes, concepts, if you will. Uh, great historical background, too. Uh, great uh, background with the scriptures as well. Um, I guess uh, maybe just talk a little bit about the Sankofa philosophy that you talk about at the start of the book. I think this is very fascinating and it kind of brings us into some of the theme of the book. Oh, yeah. It, well, it's an old African uh, saying. Uh, it's called the Sankofa. Sankofa. And what it means is that we, it's Sankofa. And it means we have to look. We, In order to move forward, we have to look back. Mm. It doesn't mean that we have to live in the past, but it does mean we can learn lessons from the past in order to move on into the future. And so, you know, you, there's an old African-American saying, you never forget the bridge that brought you over. And so it may not, the bridge may not work for you anymore, but you still needed it. Well, with Sankofa, it, it, it's, it's looking back, and we do it all the time, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in order not to make the same mistakes or in order to, to get new insights. And I think it's very, very, very important um, that, well, the Dalai Lama, James, I remember listening to him and he said, for instance, let's say you were a Buddhist or a Christian or, you know, a Muslim or what have you. And let's say you left your faith because maybe you found a new faith. Mm -hmm. He said, never talk bad about the faith that you left, because even though it doesn't work for you anymore, it still may work for other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very simple thing. But how many people do you know that, oh, I don't believe that anymore, and da -da -da, yada, 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 yada. Well, you know, but you, you can't, every, every journey that we took in the past makes us the person we are today. And so you can, one can look back and learn from that sure. and move forward at the same time. Wow. Again, leads us to the book, A New World If You Can Take It, uh, God, Extraterrestrials and the Evolution of Human Consciousness. Michael, we're looking back at the past again. We're looking for answers. And a lot of, yes. peop a lot of people are opening up to this now. A lot of people are looking in this direction. Um, this is like a rediscovery process, Michael, as opposed to a discovery process. You, you, you hit it on the head, James. You know, and I was one of those people, for instance, uh, I, I threw I threw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, I said the Bible is is it's all uh, you know BS and the stories aren't true and you know who cares? And and but I had to take a second look at it. I'm a man of the West, mm. and by that I mean I'm shaped by Western culture. Maybe if I lived in in you know in the Middle East, it'd be uh, I'd be a Muslim, or if I lived in the Far East, I would be a uh, a Buddhist or, or, or Hindu or what have you. But the thing is, is that no matter how, how I try to get away from the Bible, it, those teachings always came back to me. And I had to, to revisit them in order to make them pertinent for today. Because I, th I think, I, I don't think, I know, at least for me, that there's a lot of wisdom in those books. Mm -hmm. uh, in those stories. And then if you add the extraterrestrial component, to me, it even enhances it. Uh, and so I didn't, I had to go back and say, what, what am I doing? 
I'm throwing out all this stuff because either I don't agree with certain things or they may not have happened the way I thought they should happen or they've been contradictory. Wow, for sure. I had to grow I had to grow up. Yeah. In other words. Yeah. I think that's what you and, and you alluded to this later in the book as well, when you talk about the twenty first century perspective being important. Um and why not? You know, why not look at this with a twenty first century perspective? Because it, it makes answers, it makes simpler it simplifies some you know, really bizarre, strange facts in the in the scriptures, Michael. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I mean here we are. Our ancestors were dealing with technology and beings who were just some of them were really advanced some of them were more technolo technologically advanced but maybe not so much spiritually advanced mm -hmm. and so they mistook these people for gods not that they were stupid not that they were ignorant but we do that today i mean we as a culture we worship technology mm -hmm. we're in awe of technology and so um, they, they were overwhelmed. But now we can look back because we see what's happening in our skies and we say, wow, this must be what they were trying to explain to us. Mm. Totally Using agree. the language that, that they knew of their day. Sure. Totally agree with you. I was holding a conversation the other day, Michael, and, and explaining about the left brain world that we're encouraged to follow this worshipping technology you know we think we yeah. have these big telescopes and we have our flat screens and uh, as john anthony west says the stripy toothpaste and our nuclear bombs and we think we're the most advanced thing ever but you know like i say to people this technology there use it wisely just use it but don't worship it you know don't worship it you know once you start doing yeah. that once you start doing that you're just going so there's no balance in that there's no balance in that um well, you know, you, you, you're right. And, and, and the thing is, is that, and, 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 you know, people have been telling us this for ages, whether it was Dr. King or other great men and women, they, you know, our, we don't have the spirituality to deal with the technology that we have because we just take and make weapons. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and, and that we get, we get technology, whether it's from crash discs, or what have you, and instead of maybe use, using uh, uh, working with free energy or using it to feed the world, we make weapons from it. So it, it goes to show you how immature we are. Mm. But in the book, you know, I, I, I use the title, I talk about how I got the title, but it is going to be a new world if we can take it, mm. if we can grow up enough. Mm to become part of the galactic community. I think that's what you allude to in the book when you, you lay out your, your premise in the, in the book itself and uh, you say, you know, you've got a couple of reasons for writing this book. Um, yes. Maybe just expand on that, the maturity of God and then also learning about the past as well, Michael. Well, yeah, I think that our concept of God and I, I, and I want to be respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at God like, you know, there's a man up in the sky, it's Santa Claus, who punishes you if you're naughty and rewards you if you're nice. And I think that's a child's view of, 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 of a creator and that we use, we make God in our image. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this God is jealous. This God gets angry. Uh, and, and we do see that in the Bible. We see that Yahweh is 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 a bloodthirsty uh uh being a lot of temper tantrums that kind of thing mm -hmm. but if we if we look at the palladian form of spirituality one among many mm -hmm. one among many uh that 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 god what they call it creation is all that is it's not anthropomorphic uh it's an energy it's 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 a way of being in the world. It's 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 it can be personalized, but but there's certain laws. If I jump off my roof, the law of nature says I'm going to go splat. There, but there are ways we can work with the law. How? Well, by treating people the way we want to be treated. What you put out comes back. You reap what you sow. It's karma. These are natural laws, mm -hmm. and if we observe nature. And if we be still long enough, we'll realize that we're, th there's no God outside. This, this is everywhere mm. and we're part of it. 
Sure. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed that uh, in the book, not for any extraterrestrial uh, uh, connotation, Michael, uh, but the Pleiadian spirituality, just because I like it as a philosophical <laughs> grouping of ideas. Uh, you talk about oneness, balance, eternal spirituality, truth, equality, love, self-responsibility. Now, these, this is a beautiful, uh, <laughs> this is a beautiful blueprint or mandate for us to, or a code to live by. You know, why not? It, it really is. It really is. It really is. Why not? Like, you know, I mean, if the time was right for it, Michael, it's now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the point is, though, even if you're not into ET or UFOs or, or any of the confusing diffusion out there that's going on. And, and I mean, even if you're, you know, a non-believer or an atheist or whatever, you know, it, there's still some really interesting, you know, stuff in the Pleiadian spirituality concept. And, and, and you know, it, it's, it's, it might seem like common sense, but it's in practice, it's not there, Michael. In practice, it's not there. It's hard to do. It's difficult. I mean, it, it's, it's difficult to not respond to other people's ignorance uh, with ignorance. It's difficult to take the high road. It's difficult to, to raise your vibration. But the messages that I get is that human beings have to go to the next stage of evolution. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to wait, raise our vibratory rate. And how do we do that? By learning to love. Mm -hmm. Not 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 the love that says we're all going to sing Kumbaya and that we're all going to hold hands and, you know, no, that's not, that's impossible. But the love that says, I respect you for who you are. We don't have to think alike. We don't have to look alike to love alike. Sure, sure. You you state in the book that you don't like the word aliens. Uh, you actually prefer other terms. Maybe explain that for us, Michael. Well... I, I think it's derogatory. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, there are a couple of terms I don't like. I don't like the term abductee. I don't feel like I was abducted. Uh, I don't like the term alien. I think maybe star visitor, mm -hmm. uh, star person. Even if you want to use the word extraterrestrial, that's fine. But, I mean, look, they're, they're human beings on planet Earth that no one wants to be called an alien. You're an outsider. Mm -hmm. You're different. Now, of course, they're different in ways, but they're not different that they don't deserve the same uh, respect, mm -hmm. uh, the same compassion, the same, uh, uh, you know, just the, the same way you would treat a neighbor, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, and, and so I think that if we... If, if we can maybe just even just find new terminology, it may help us to slowly evolve and not to see people as separate. I mean, they're, they're, they're from creation. Mm -hmm. They may, some of them look bizarre. Obviously, they don't all live here on planet Earth, but they're still part of creation. And if you're part of creation, then you deserve the respect. You, you don't have to earn it. You get it sure. because you are a being. Sure. Hey, we got some weird creatures in this planet that people put in cages and, 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 and love them. So, you know, it's like, you know, if somebody looks different or somebody looks normal, I don't think that's a, I think that's a valid point, you know, and yeah. um, I think you're right. It's a politically correct way of uh, treating the, this in, the issue. Um, Michael, I just wanted to mention the Reiki thing as well at this point, because I think it's great to explore your diverse and grounded character. Um, Tell us a little bit about your Reiki. Uh, it's it's quite it's something I've been uh, it's something I've been introduced to in about the last couple of years. I wasn't aware of it in my earlier days. But um, tell us about the different. You're trained in UC and Karunaki. Tell us a little bit about that, Michael. And oh, the, your, the Yusui method. Yeah, that that's the, was, well supposed to be the original lineage. What, but I, I will tell you this. Um, I, I started out as a Reiki master. Uh, you know, I took all the training, mm -hmm. and I used I used it in hospitals. I had a personal practice. But when I started having my experiences, mm -hmm. um, whatever it was just got stronger. Now, I say it's Reiki because, that you know, it's hard to explain to people. But it's, it's a much stronger energy, and I think the energy is stronger because whenever I get contact, mm -hmm. the first thing that happens is my energy changes. Wow. Because their energy has changed. It's such a, a high vibratory rate. Um, 
but it's 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 an old uh, uh, healing modality. Uh, legend has it that uh, uh, it, it's rediscovered uh, that Dr. Yusui. Now there are different stories, but um, he was uh, he was supposed to be a Christian or very interested in Christianity, and he wanted to find out what type of healing Jesus and the disciples were doing. Mm -hmm. And so he came to this country and went to the University of Chicago back in the 1880s, I think. This is one story. Mm -hmm. And he went back to, uh, to Japan, and was on his way back to Japan, he stopped off in Tibet, and he met these monks. Mm -hmm. and they were saying, man, we've been doing this for about 5,000 years. Now, there are also some stories that he had a mystical experience and what have you. So there are many different mm. uh, explanations for it. But it is, it, it, it's it's a science. You don't have to believe in God or anything like that. Um, and and Ray means universal. Qi means energy. Chinese call it Qi. Um, it's energy, mm. like everything is. And uh, you go through something called an attunement process. You can send it to people. You know, you, you know, you can do distant healings on people. I love it, I, I and I use it. Mm. But I just know I have a good friend who's a healer. Uh, her name is Rose Marie Starr, and uh, she came to me, and she's very sophisticated in her. Uh, she can really recognize different energies. Mm -hmm. And anyway, she gave me the privilege of doing a couple sessions on her, and she said, Michael, this is not Reiki what you're doing. This is really something really, really strong. And I I said, okay. I said, but it's hard for me to explain that to people. She said, fine, tell them you do Reiki. Tell, tell them you're a spiritual healer. But this this is very, very, very strong energy. And I got it from my, my star friends. Wow. Wow. I mean, I got the energy from them. Because every time I see them, um, I, you know, I, 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 I get by on less sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to, to sleep as much. I my my hair my hair and my my nails they grow much faster. Wow. Than they used to do. Uh, I I feel like I I'm, I'm I'm definitely more psychic than you know I'm more intuitive than I used to be. Those are the physiological uh, uh, changes that are definite since I've been having you know visits. Um, my I think my spirituality has been accelerated sure. and by that I mean um, for instance it's much easier for me now to say I'm scared or to say I'm sorry or to say I don't know um, I don't mind doing that I don't I, I don't have to be right all the time uh, I, I you know uh, that's part of my maturing process um, I, I live life less fearfully I don't I don't buy into the separateness uh, uh, that 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 the culture uh, really stresses, you know, someone's tea party and you're not, or they're gay and you're straight, or I don't I don't get into all that because I know there's a oneness. I also feel a, more of an affinity with nature. Wow. You know, I don't I I I I I don't believe in the separateness anymore. Not that I ever really did, but even on deeper deeper levels, I get it. That what I do to you, I do to myself. What I do to this planet, I do to myself. Because we're all connected. Mm -hmm. We really, really are. Michael, you're also trained in the medicine Buddha traditions. Can you elaborate on that a little bit too? Well, there was a, um, it, it's a different attunement process, but it's, a, it's called medicine Buddha Reiki. And, and basically, someone who's trained in this will give you the attunement. It's all about raising your vibration. Mm -hmm. So it's just another level of Reiki, but it's very, very powerful. And, um, and of course, I have a medicine Buddha in my house. It just reminds me of when I meditate, just, just that really life is about, it's, it's, it's about healing. It's about healing and being healed. It's about, reaching out and being connected, mm -hmm. whether you're an atheist or whether you're an evangelical Christian or what have you. You, you, you know, you, we have to learn to get beyond those boundaries to realize that there are no boundaries. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Wow, fascinating, Michael. You know, the reason I mentioned that too, Michael, is to give a bit of depth of character to you for the listeners and to show that you're diverse outside the theology. Uh, it just branches into a practical and a healing sense too. And uh, I think the, you're a fascinating character, Michael. You really, really are. Um, you know, to come back to the book then, um, yes. you know, you are very well versed in theology, but masses in divinity. Um, yes. Maybe tell us a little bit about the Hindu pantheon of gods and, and how that fits into this kind of picture of aliens. Um, well, well in it's a great question. I, and I, I tell you, and I say it in the book, I think that Hinduism and Catholicism will do very well once disclosure happens. Now, disclosure is happening all the time. Mm. Uh, but some people are waiting for the government to say, guess what? And that may happen. That may happen. It may not, but it may. But they already have the Hin the Hindus and the Catholics. They already have. Um, they already deal with lesser gods, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, the Catholics have their saints, and of course, the Hindus have a whole pantheon of gods. They have the their main deity, Brahman, and then they have lesser deities. Well, that's what we're seeing in the. UFO contactee phenomenon because a lot of these beings will say, yes, there is something called creation, or you would call it God or what have you, and we're all part of that. I, and, and so you can see the hierarchy. Yeah. Well, mainline Protestant Christianity, they don't have that, and it's going to be very difficult for them because they don't make room for lesser gods, if you will. Sure. sure. And, and so Hinduism and Catholicism, they, they'll do they'll do well. They'll do well. Um, so I, but I, I mean, we'll all get around to it eventually. Sure. But, but I, I don't think they'll be so stunned. And, and listen, they're not stunned anyway, because they the Vatican's already talking about uh, extraterrestrial life and has been since really about 2005. And of course, Hinduism has the Mahabharata, which is, you know, a story of uh, 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 flying machines, Vimanas, they're called, mm -hmm. and their wars in the sky. And so we, we have it right there, mm -hmm. that there there's a life on other planets, and it's visited us here and continues to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Vatican's really interesting, and uh, I can't remember when I found out, but I, when I found out how deeply involved they are into astronomy, I, I, I sometimes wonder now, in hindsight of the last 10 years, what they really know, how much they know about ET life. Um, you know, they know plenty. They know plenty. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that they also realize that this, the lid's going to blow off this thing eventually, and they want to be on the right side of history. Hmm. They don't. They want to be in the driving seat uh, before the disclosure comes full on. Yeah. 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 And you can't blame them. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're out to protect. They're, they're out to protect their faith. Relevant. They want to be relevant. Yeah. And uh, you know, and 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 otherwise, religion will go away. Now, the Dalai Lama says uh, that we need to have a different sense of spirituality and ethics that may be separate from religion, because right now. Religions are, are are tearing us apart. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, if you look at if you look at the wars in the Middle East, yes, they're over oil and other resources, but they're also religious wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I often look at the religious wars. Maybe not exclude Muslim for the moment, but I think religious wars. Um, you know, it's usually governmental groups using the religion as a bargaining chip or a way to ignite or a way to, you know, exacerbate the situation. However, I think with the Muslim thing, it's more full on in a, in, a, in its sense as a religious war. Um, and, you know, the, and, and in fairness, the, the Muslims bite. I mean, look at, you know, look at what's gone on with the the Arab Spring and that, you know, they just they just reacted. I mean, I think the whole thing started with Facebook riots. Nobody was questioning where the Facebook uh, and the tweets were coming from that was igniting all this. Nobody questioned the source. They just responded, you know, and 
is you know maybe it's too easy for you know religions to you know ignite themselves and and there's a byproduct of that i think inherently each religion on its own is a good thing if you know if if it, if it was there was a maturity about it and some sort of a you know an attitude to not reacting or not responding michael perhaps well and i i think you you you've hit the nail on the head and this is why the palladian um now there are other uh, extraterrestrial views, uh, but 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 the Palladian viewpoint is 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 is, is so powerful, and it just makes so much sense. Mm, mm. You see uh, uh, that that our for a lot for a lot of our star visitors, our religions are primitive, mm -hmm. and they're primitive because we use them as a way we fight each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's not what mature people do. Sure. No, that's and it. That's so, it. yeah, in order to grow up, in order to become part of this galactic federation, in order, in order to grow up and be able to embrace other brothers and sisters in the cosmos, we're going to have to really chill out on the violence. Mm. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. Look, we're talking about a paradigm shift as well. You know, yes, it, and and here's the thing. For me, uh, I was aware of a paradigm shift in history, not, not outside any ET or religious um, doctrines, stuff like that. You know, just in purely in a, in an alternative history. I watched a paradigm shift over the last twenty years, where you know alternative historians are now driving the research as opposed to you know academia. Pick on Egyptologists if you like or whatever, but. You know, it's it's also it's it's not just that though. It, the the paradigm shift is across the the planet. It's on levels in spirituality. There's an evolving process going on. I don't know if it's evolving in the right direction, Michael, or I don't know if it's been misguided in a, in another direction. I'm talking about all levels of a paradigm shift. Perhaps maybe just describe where you think the paradigm shift is today, Michael, in, in your sense. It, it, maybe just particularly with the spirituality, and the and the UFOs. I think the paradigm shift is, 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 is on many levels. But I think what's happening is, and I feel what's happening is, the old way isn't working anymore. You mentioned the Arab Spring. Uh, what's going on in Hong Kong now? People are saying, this is not working. We have to go to a different level. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody has to be a, a democratic. Uh, I'm, I'm not in favor of us imposing our social political paradigm on other people. But, you know, there's a new world being born, literally. And it's, it's going through economics, it's going through our spirituality, it's going through the way we treat the earth, you know, with climate change. A new world is being born, but it's painful and it's scary because you kind of don't know. <laughs> and, and, and if you're going to hang on to, you know, what's the old saying? Let go or be dragged. Yeah. And so that's what's happening now. And you're going to find souls who are either going to die off uh, or they're going to hold on to the old way of being because that's all they know. But it's, it's no turning back now. Mm -hmm. There's no turning back. We have to go to the next phase of evolution because if we don't, we're going to destroy ourselves. Mm. You know, Einstein says that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Sure. Well, we, we've been doing that, but it's not working anymore. Yeah, yeah. I agree, you know, and in the book, Michael, you, you helped change my perspective on something, so I commend you on that. Let me explain. You, you, you describe in great detail with great examples of how early Christianity was diverse. I was never aware of that. I always thought that Christianity was dogmatic from day one, but it wasn't. No, it was a very, no, very, not at all. it was quite diverse. And, and that's what I love about the book, Michael. It's, you know, there's great stuff in there. I'm going to get into some more stuff too, but it, it helps change my perspective on things because now I can sit back and I can go, well, a new world, if you can take it, perhaps, Michael, perhaps there is going to be a bit more diversity again. You know, we maybe, maybe that's the thing we should look towards in the paradigm shift, that we're going towards a more diverse and and respectful and, and mature outlook. I, yeah, yeah, because you know what the, the thing is, is that because you get to choose. Well, first of all, in the book, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty diverse until Constantine 
uh, in 325 mm. and, and uh, you know, the Council of Nicaea. Then Christianity becomes the official religion of the Roman Empire, and so it gets to be political, and you have to believe a certain way. But there's always this fight about who's got the real answers, who's going to be this, who's going to be that. Peter was fighting with Jesus' brother James. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Paul was fighting with, with Peter's brother James, and, and uh, uh, because, you know, Paul's saying, hey, you know, I met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he changed my life. And Peter and, and Peter and James are saying, yeah, but we knew him. So it's always who's got the right, who's got the true story. But I feel that now people are saying there's a bigger story mm -hmm. and that I get to decide how I'm going to be in the world. I get to decide what's going to help make me a more loving, whole, integrated, authentic individual. Not some priest, not some book, but my own experience. I can learn from nature. I don't have to have a priest tell me what to do. I can learn from my own experiences. And sure, if I want to uh, incorporate the Bible or the Quran or the Dhammapada or the Upanishads, fine. But it's because it's what's if if I experience it, then it's true for me. Sure. It's not because you told me it was true. Sure. It's because I experienced it as true. Very different way to look at life. How is the Quran on um, the ET concept? Well, first of all, they, you know, they admit. When you read the Quran, and it says, uh, when it talks about Allah, who is Lord of the worlds, plural, mm -hmm. so they're already saying there are other worlds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're already saying there are other worlds. Now, they have what they call the jinn. And the jinn act like angels. They fly. They have, they have, uh, they can shape shift. Uh, they can be very mischievous, uh, but but they're beings from either another dimension or another world. Now, Gabriel, some of the same characters in the Bible also appear in the Quran. Mm. Miriam, who's Jesus' mother, Mary, uh, uh, Jesus, who's called Isa. Gabriel is the one who tells Muhammad to recite. And he gives him the Quran. Gabriel is a messenger. But we've now, but if you read my first book, you realize that I think all these angels are really extraterrestrials. So Gabriel is an extraterrestrial. Mm -hmm. And he is guiding Muhammad and has him recite the Quran. Now, whether or not um, these angels are trying to start a new religion, you know, intentionally, I don't know. But I do know they were trying to give a primitive people some guidelines on how to live a peaceful life. For sure, for sure. I think that's the, the great thing that your work points out, is the crossovers between some of these religions. Uh, Epic of Gilgamesh is another great example. Um, the crossover with Gabriel in the Quran. Um, I mean, does none of these religions talk to each other, Michael? Do they not see the crossover? Is that the point? Maybe they don't want their crossover to be in the other one. Well, what? Well, you know, we can't have Christianity without Judaism, and uh, Islam is kind of a, a hybrid. It comes out of Judaism and Christianity, mm -hmm. so they're all they're all in the same region of the world. They originated in the same region. And so there's, there's, there's a connection. But you can't see the connection if you're so busy focusing on the differences. It's not to say that the differences aren't there. I know, I, I, I'll give an example. I don't think it's apples and oranges. I have a lot of friends, and they'll say to me, sure. Michael, I don't see color when I look at you. I don't see you as a black person or whatever, 
or native or whatever. I just see you as a person. Now I know what they're trying to say. Sure. But 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 I say you have to see my color. That's the first thing you see. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't keep us um, from connecting with each other. But to say you don't see a brown man with dreadlocks is intellectually dishonest. I want you to see that. I just don't want you to let that get in the way. Sure. You, you know, and I know what they're trying to say. They're trying to say, I just see you're just a human being. And I am. Well, with the religions, we're so busy focusing on whether Jesus is the true savior and every other religion is really inferior or, you know, it, you know, you're an infidel if you don't uh, practice Islam the way we say you should practice it. Uh, you know, we, we get caught up into that and that's not what they had in mind at all. Jesus wasn't a Christian. Buddha wasn't a Buddhist. And Muhammad wasn't a Muslim. Sure, sure. Okay, let me lay the big question on you because I know you have a chapter in the book and it's probably a good time to mention that is who or what is God, Michael? Wonderful. I, I, that's the great question. I know for me, I experience God personally and I don't, you know, use the word, I like, I like the Palladian word creation, but I experience this energy is all that is. It is what keeps the universe together. Some would say it's love. I would, I would tend to agree with that. Um, you, you know, I, I, and I, and I think, and I feel that it's good that I don't, I can't give you a definitive answer because the, the, the finite can never comprehend the infinite. Mm -hmm. Whatever I say God is, I'm wrong because it's so much bigger than that. But I can tell you that God is not an astronaut. I can tell you that God is not concerned with who you sleep with or, 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 or what political party you happen to be involved with or what football teams you want to win. It's bigger than that. And it's what holds us together. It's the law of the universe. And Jesus talks about in his Gospels that those who worship, and he calls him the Father, must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So, it's, it's, you know, it's a spirit. It's an energy. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not judging you whether you're naughty or nice. The law is that what you put out, you get back. That's not punishment. That's not personal. That's just the way the universe is made up. Sure, sure. Um, well expressed, Michael, well expressed. And I think another thing that I find fascinating in the book is that um, you allude to Yahweh and Jehovah maybe not being the same person, uh, the same character. They may not be. I mean, I, mean uh, I also think that when Jesus came back to talk about uh, the Father, he was talking about his father, who I think Jesus was possibly a hybrid, but it's almost like he's talking about a different God because the God Yahweh in the, the First Testament, the Old Testament, is bloodthirsty, has anger management problems, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is, is very concerned with tribalism. You are my people. I'm jealous. I want you to be circumcised. Don't want you to mix with the other tribes. That doesn't sound like an all-encompassing God to me. I mean, you know, a loving deity. It sounds like someone who's uh, just as greedy and insecure as human beings in a lot of ways. Sounds like half the planet, Michael, <laughs> in a way. That's exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so, but you know, you're not you're not taught to ask those questions. You're not taught to think about well, if God is God. Why would he kill men, women, and children? Why would he have his his followers do that? And so I'm asking the question: If is that a God that we want to be associated with? Is it as simple as a scholar scholarly mix up, Michael, with the letters Y H W H for Yahweh and J H Y H for Jehovah? Is it as simple as that? Well, yes, because because you know in in, in Hebrew. You're not supposed to utter the word of God. 
-hmm. the name of God. So they put these uh, alphabets there in order, you know, without the consonants there, without the vowels. So you could, you could, you could say it that way. But we could argue that Yahweh and Jehovah are both astronauts. I mean, the Palladians say that Jehovah is, but we do know that they're not God. We do know that they are beings from another world, but not the creator or the creation uh, deity or energy that the Palladians are talking about. And I think we really need to look at that mm -hmm. uh, because we made God into this, this man who's going to judge you whether you're naughty or nice. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem like a mature... Um, a mature perspective on how the universe works. These came back to me. And I had to, to revisit them in order to make them pertinent for today. Because I, th I think, I, I don't think, I know, at least for me, that there's a lot of wisdom in those books, mm -hmm. uh, in those stories. And then if you add the extraterrestrial component, to me it even enhances it. Uh, and so I didn't, I had to go back and say, what, what am I doing? I'm throwing out all this stuff because either I don't agree with certain things or they may not have happened the way I thought they should happen or they've been contradictory. Wow, for sure. I had to grow, I had to grow up. Yeah. In other words. Yeah. I think that's what you, and you alluded to this later in the book as well, when you talk about the 21st century perspective being important. Um, and why not? You know, why not look at this with a 21st century perspective? Because it, it makes answers. It makes simple. It simplifies some, you know, really bizarre, strange facts in the, in the scriptures, Michael. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, here we are. Our ancestors were dealing with technology and beings who were religion. And this is going to sound strange coming from a, a clergy person. <laughs> you know, it it can be not all the time. So if listeners are listening, I'm not saying all the time, but it can be used more to separate us than it can to bring us together. No, oh, for sure. I totally agree with you, Michael. And um, I think you've done a, a great service in the book. And uh, I think you've nailed a, a few themes, concepts, if you will. Uh, great historical background, too. Uh, great uh, background with the scriptures as well. Um I guess uh, maybe just talk a little bit about the Sankofa philosophy that you talk about at the start of the book. I think this is very fascinating and it kind of brings us into some of the theme of the book. Oh, yeah. It, well, it's an old African uh, saying. Uh, it's called the Sankofa. Sankofa. And what it means is that we, it's Sankofa. And it means we have to look. We, In order to move forward, we have to look back. Mm. It doesn't mean that we have to live in the past, but it does mean we can learn lessons from the past in order to move on into the future. And so, you know, you, there's an old African-American saying, you never forget the bridge that brought you over. And so it may not, the bridge may not work for you anymore, but you still needed it. Well, with Sankofa, it, it, it's, it's looking back, and we do it all the time, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in order not to make the same mistakes or in order to, to get new insights. And I think it's very, very, very important um, that, well, the Dalai Lama, James, I remember listening to him and he said, for instance, let's say you were a Buddhist or a Christian or, you know, a Muslim or what have you. And let's say you left your faith because maybe you found a new faith. Mm -hmm. He said, never talk bad about the faith that you left, because even though it doesn't work for you anymore, it still may work for other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very simple thing. But how many people do you know that, oh, I don't believe that anymore, and da -da -da, yada, 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 yada. Well, you know, but you, you can't, every, every journey that we took in the past makes us the person we are today. And so you can look, well,
of course, with our previous show, Alien Scriptures, it's, it's, I can see where you've gone with the book, Michael, and uh, gone in this direction. Yeah, you know, it was, I wanted to, uh, I don't want to say get the religion part out of the way. I, I put some stuff in the book where people who either didn't read uh, Alien Scriptures or if they, if they didn't read it, they would kind of be caught up. And then I wanted to take it to the next phase because I believe that in order for human beings to go to the next stage of evolution, we're going to have to stop looking outside of ourselves for answers and start looking with, within. And mm-hmm. religion can look back and learn from that sure. and move forward at the same time. Wow. Again, leads us to the book, A New World If You Can Take It, uh, God, Extraterrestrials and the Evolution of Human Consciousness. Michael, we're looking back at the past again. We're looking for answers and a lot of, yes. peop- a lot of people are opening up to this now. A lot of people are looking in this direction. Um, this is like a rediscovery process, Michael, as opposed to a discovery process. You, you, you hit it on the head, James. You know, and I was one of those people, for instance, uh, I, I threw I threw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, I said the Bible is is it's all uh, you know BS and the stories aren't true and you know who cares? And and but I had to take a second look at it. I'm a man of the West, mm. and by that I mean I'm shaped by Western culture. Maybe if I lived in in you know in the Middle East, it'd be uh, I'd be a Muslim, or if I lived in the Far East, I would be a uh, a Buddhist or, or, or Hindu or what have you. But the thing is, is that no matter how, how I tried to get away from the Bible, it, those teachings always